It's time to change your life. You want to lose weight, but you're looking for direction. You're not exactly sure what the best route to go is or what tools to use as you get there in that process. And frankly, there's so much information out there that you're a bit confused as to what is the right first step to take. Let's do it. And in the process, let's also give you a seven day plan that you can use, which can be changed so that you have a good direction to start from. I'm Shane Farmer. This is Dark Horse Rowing, where we build better humans through rowing so that you can write your own story. So can you or should you lose weight with rowing? And how do you do that if you've made that choice? And a quick note, if this really is your first step and you're just starting this journey, be sure that you're doing this for yourself. And by saying that, I mean, make sure you are supporting your own cause, that you have decided, yes, this is the right decision for me and I absolutely want this. Absent that, any other reason is not gonna be strong enough for you to make a lifelong change and that is indeed what this should be. Disclaimer time! I also wanna make sure that you know I am not a physician, I am not a nutritionist, I have simply gone through this process with a lot of people. Be sure that you have approved the start of this process with your physician and that you were in good healthy condition to go through this process and also all of these opinions are strictly my own from my experiences. First, let's take a look at your nutrition. What are the things that are actually going into your body on a regular basis. Let's start with a quick analogy. I walk you up to two doors. One is labeled food and the other one is labeled workouts. Now, because this is the start of the journey, you have to pick one. Whichever one, whichever door you choose to go through is the only thing that you can change to try and lose as much weight as possible. Which one are you going to choose? Before we make the decision, let's do a quick consideration here. In an ideal week of workouts, let's say that you get in seven workouts. That's quite a bit and actually more than I get in a week, but let's just, all things perfect, you get seven workouts in a week. Now let's consider our ideal week of eating, assuming that we eat an average of three times a day, seven days a week, that is 21 meals that we consume within a week. Now going back to the workouts, let's assume that we need to improve there, right? Because that's what we're trying to do. I choose the workout door, then I end up having to improve the workouts. That's the only thing I can do. In my ideal week, what can I do? Add maybe two more workouts, making it eight or nine workouts? That's a lot and that's a lot of stress on your body. Okay, so let's say that we don't wanna add workouts. Let's add intensity, question mark? Like, give it 110%? Like, that's a little, that's challenging. It's hard to give more intensity because now your body's gonna get drained more per workout, which is gonna be harder to do. Now let's jump back to the nutrition door. I open that door and I have to make an improvement on those 21 times of eating a week. Well, I'm not gonna add more times of eating all I have to do is change the inputs into my body 21 times a week, and wow, that's pretty substantial. If I put in higher quality or just different foods 21 times a week, now we're talking about some significant impact on the body versus trying to squeeze more out of your workouts that are already happening. So again, let's go back to, we're making our decision between the two doors, what is the door that we should start with. Is it adding more intensity or more workouts in an already full week? Or is it simply changing the thing that we're doing 21 times a week already? Just tune in the knob a little bit. That is the direction we wanna start. Second is making sure that when we start talking movement, you find something that both challenges you, gives you enjoyment, and that you're gonna to continue to come back to. And that, is the challenging part, it's coming back to it. You have to love doing the thing. You really have to enjoy that part, otherwise you're not gonna wanna keep doing it or making it a new habit. And where rowing walks into this party is that rowing is very doable for everyone, whether you're overweight, if you're pregnant, if you're disabled, it's very usable for many different purposes. And because rowing has such a low barrier to entry, a lot of people who are looking to lose weight find it a very comforting tool to use because there's not a lot of risk there. You're not risking damaging your joints because of gravity and pounding on the pavement. You're not risking damage from poor technique because you lift too much weight and blow something out. That, that same risk just isn't there, so it becomes a very comforting tool for people to use, especially starting the process. It also carries a decent meditative element because of the sound of the machine and the repetitive nature of the movement it can become very soothing and relaxing to settle into on a regular basis and people find and report that it's actually very comforting to spend time on the machine so you're both sweating 
and meditating. Third, you need to keep variety in your workouts so that your body doesn't plateau or just get so used to one exercise that you don't develop a variety of elements in your body. Variety happens to come in a number of different elements and yes, of course, rowing actually happens to hit on many of these from strength to endurance to strength endurance to coordination, agility, balance. All of these things can be improved using the rowing machine as a training tool. For example, you can take your damper all the way up. That's going to give you a decent amount of strength work. If you take it all the way down, you're going to have to work on speed. If you give yourself a long distance workout, that's going to be an aerobic based workout. And if you go with short, high intensity, you can be working either phosphocreatine or anaerobic energy systems, all of which are very necessary for you to work to create a full complementary picture of health. So the question I asked at the beginning, can you or should you lose weight with rowing? Well, the answer is absolutely yes. And I would highly encourage you to consider the machine as a tool for that purpose. Now, what about creating a plan that is going to give you a process which will help you to lose weight on the machine so that you have guidance? So I'm gonna give you a seven day plan that is based off of something I would write for a client if they were asking to use primarily the rowing machine on their weight loss journey, but I'm gonna simplify it for you so that you can manipulate it and change it as you need for your own process. Now, I'm bringing this to you from a standpoint of, I am going to write it for somebody who is on day one of the journey. Please understand that. So if you're past that and if you're you know, well on your journey, make sure that you're thinking about that and you know adjusting distances or times accordingly so that it better suits you because I'm really thinking, all right, today is step one. Also, please note, this is not the only way you can lose weight. This is just a way and I wanna help you have like something to take away tangible from this video. Okay, day one. Day one is going to be a mid distance row, thinking something like 3000 meters in one sitting. The focus points for this are going to be a complete it without stopping. That's the goal. I want you to have success in this workout. So don't come out so hard that you have to stop before you get to the end of the 3000 meters. Step two is think about good mechanics. And if you need those, obviously you can find that on our channel, but you're thinking about good mechanics over that entire distance. And that is going to help you keep the intensity low and keep your mind right on getting a good stroke, which is going to be more productive for getting more out of the workouts. Day two is going to be 30 minutes of stretching followed by 20 minutes of light activity. Now that can be whatever that means to you. If that's a 20 minute walk, that's cool. If that's jumping on a bike, um, I generally want you to get outside, not be sitting on the machine for this day's workout. Day three, this is going to be short, hard burst intervals, thinking something like 10 by 250 meters, 15 by 250 meters. Altered, of course, based off of knowing yourself. What can you handle and not overdoing it on this day, but we are working in that very short, intense range. Day four, rest. Day five is going to be a body weight strength workout. Now you're going to need to piece together what the rep scheme and everything looks like, but essentially what I would be looking for is a lot of body weight strength movements, air squats, push-ups, lunges, broomstick deadlifts, things like that that are going to make your body move and learn how to move as well as develop some strength off the machine. Day six is going to be a long row. In this instance, I'm looking at something like 6,000 meters or more. Now you don't have to do it all in one. You can break it up into, for example, three by 2,000 meters. The objective is lower intensity, but keep your heart rate elevated for a longer period of time. So if you do, for example, say three by 2,000 meters, Keep the rest periods lower so that you don't have a chance to fully let your heart rate drop. Maybe it's just a minute off so that you can get off the machine, get a little bit of water, wipe the sweat off your face, and then gradually build up to being able to handle 6,000 meters in one sitting. Now go do great things, dark horses, and of course you need some workouts to complement the program we just wrote, so click here for a playlist of workouts between 10 and 20 minutes to help you in your journey.